Hello my Soccer Universe. Well, uh, let's start a little bit unusual. Although I'm wearing Hertha from the first Bundesliga, I literally just finished watching Stuttgart against Hamburg, which was a, an awesome game, to, I have to say. And so I want to start with the second Bundesliga, or zweite Bundesliga, as we say in German, before we look at the remaining Bundesliga games that happened yesterday. I have to say that the second Bundesliga I was not very excited when I, what I saw on Saturday um, when Sunday it was yeah so and so not there's a lot of real soccer but that game between two giants of German soccer and at the beginning of the game I thought who might be the bigger one and I came to the conclusion yeah they're both about equal but Hamburg probably takes the spot and then the commentator at the beginning even said yeah this is five championships of Stuttgart against six of Hamburg Stuttgart was in two European Cup finals and Hamburg won two Euro European Cups and I think they were in two, in two more finals as well. So Hamburg is a slightly bigger team and I have to say uh, Hamburg, even over the entirety of the match, uh, more of a team. The, a team that it looked more sound. Uh, I have, have to have to say I felt, felt this is a really... Um, gelling unit maybe not the better individual players but overall hamburg had control of the game especially in the first time half and after a nice cross draw poor young palo finnish guy heads it in makes it one nil for hamburg um stuttgart playing uh, kind of surprisingly in black with red but you know with messages um you know we thank you for being good neighbors we thank you for uh, all um you do kind of thanking um, the community in a way. Um, I also saw, before we go back to, to the game, the, uh, almost every game the Ultras left a huge sign and in Stuttgart they left, yeah, uh, football's gonna leave but your business is sick and uh, you know there's always football without fans is nothing there's a lot of that stuff going on and I find it kind of a stark reminder but it's probably the right thing to do to kind of say yeah i also um that's later on ah, let, let yeah it's we, we we are in in the context um at certain games i have the option to uh listen to canned sound and i tried it yesterday at the leipzig berlin game hertha game and yes suddenly it it feels more like the real thing, but I found it so wrong that after 10, 10 minutes I switched back and I said, no, I enjoy watching soccer and I want to see the real thing and not just some fake version of it. Back to the game. I think Stuttgart took really about half an hour until they kind of got a little bit back, back, back in the game. And just in the phase where I thought they are now pressing to maybe get an equalizer, it was not really there. But uh, exactly in that phase, um, Hamburg makes an attack over, all, over the left side and a hand penalty uh, is resulting where actually there was a huge chance the um, uh, ref was waiting for advantage. Uh, Hamburg didn't do much with it and then uh, he gave the penalty and Aaron Hunt ste steps up, um, uh, waits and then rolls it right down the middle after he saw that the uh, goalkeeper. Uh, was falling. I just realized I should. Yeah, let's. So I thought that the game, the game is over. Nope, everything but because coming out of the break, Wataru uh, Endo heads it in 47th minute. It was really uh, a minute after, and then really Stuttgart got the upper hand and uh, created chances. I mean, there was a short period where Hamburg again. As I said, Hamburg seems like the better team. Stuttgart seems to have the better players. This is kind of the balance that was there, but I think as a team, Hamburg works better. Um, and then they get, Stuttgart gets also a penalty. Um, and I have to say, <laughs> yes, uh, Mangala, he runs there and the keeper of Stuttgart Fernandes is coming out and it looks really clumsy but Mangala was looking for that contact in any way Nicolas Gonzalez steps up again the look at the referee makes it 2-2 game on 
And I have to say, I was then expecting Stuttgart to go for the win, and for about a minute or two they did, but then it was actually Hamburg who was more dangerous and had actually not huge chances or so on, but you always had the feeling they are controlling the game, they are creating, they're trying to create something. And then in stoppage time, uh, Nicolas Gonzalez can sneak past the um, uh, defender, puts a cross in where Gonzalo Castro, honestly, he's also left too much alone and puts it in in stoppage time. And Stuttgart wins a game that, honestly, I think a draw would have been slightly lucky. I think Hamburg was the better team. But since Stuttgart is one of my teams that I really like in Germany, I don't dislike Hamburg, but I like Stuttgart more. I'm quite happy with that. And I just realized over there I have my Stuttgart scarf that I probably should have put around me that I have a little something Stuttgart yeah. next time. Anyway, so this ends uh, the other big game and let's look at the results that we had in the second Bundesliga. We had uh, Regensburg against Nürnberg at 2-2, uh, something that doesn't really have Nürnberg. Nürnberg, they just got relegated and they're again in more trouble. Fürth surprisingly loses to Osnabrück 2-0. Um, Osnabrück was a team that was kind of down there. Uh, Darmstadt with a big win in, uh, in Auer. Sandhausen also wins the bottom dweller derby. 1-0 uh, over Wiesbaden, Hannover 1-1 one, one against Karlsruhe, Karlsruhe, um, yeah, getting points, maybe moving out there, let's see, St. Pauli Heidenheim ends goalless, which is a big letdown for Heidenheim, because with a win they could have put a lot of pressure on Stuttgart and Hamburg, so um, that way there was now, Stuttgart-Hamburg was more like, yeah, this is between the promotion spot and um, uh, you know, the playoff spot, although Heidenheim is not out of, out, out of it. Bochum gets a vital win over Kiel, 2-1, which I honestly did not expect. And then we saw Stuttgart, Hamburg and Bielefeld Dresden still to be played. Now, uh, if you look at the table, uh, actually quite some movement. Stuttgart gets back in on, on top. Bielefeld looks almost certainty of being promoted, uh, especially with the game in hand. Now they're five points ahead, this might uh, turn to eight. Um, Stuttgart also looks strong now. They were below 50% before the game. Now they look in a strong position again. And uh, I think Hamburg has to play, still play Heidenheim. So that's why it, um, that was maybe not that ideal for them to be in this field. But it seems that those three are the ones. Heidenheim though is not entirely out of it, they suffer in the percentage chances here uh, due to a lower rating from 538. I also think Darmstadt is slightly still in there, but let's see about that. So that's the second Bundesliga. Let's talk Bundesliga, because they were also quite an interesting match. And I think the most interesting one, not the best one this but the most in in interesting one, uh, I think was the Leipzig against Hertha game, uh, where Hertha took a very early lead um, in Leipzig uh, through Grujic, and I really, th uh, nice header, I really thought that, that Leipzig might get into trouble, but um, they got themselves back in, and Klosterman also corner was not very well defended, makes it 1-1. This was the first time since the uh, break came back that Hertha was actually um, scoring in the first half. Second half, Mateusz Koniab is a thorn in Leipzig's side. And actually he provokes a yellow-red for Halstenberg, who gets sent off in the 63rd with a yellow-red, as I said. But uh, just when I thought, okay, Hertha might turn this around, no. Just wait a minute, Patrick Schick takes a um, cautionary shot from the outside of the box and um, Jorine Jastein cannot control it and throws it himself into the net. 2-1 Leipzig and Hertha needed some time to get uh, back into it and it didn't look like they got a score. They got a penalty where Piontek who came on uh, in, the, in the roundup makes it 2-2. Two two. Um, other games that happened, um, the Hoffenheim-Köln game was crazy. Um, Hoffenheim, it was the uh, Baumgartner show. Uh, he makes it 1-0 after nice season Brun last. I think there was a 2-0 that was rolled out, but it's kind of an open match until Sebastian Bornau is sent off. 
was first given yellow, then a look on, on a VR and it, it's a red. And right after half, Baumgartner makes a second and assists a third. In the 48th, it's 3 0 curl, and everyone thinks that's done. Nope. Because Benjamin Hübner gets also sent off two minutes later, and suddenly curl feels something, and Florian Kainz pulls one back. Even better. Now Köln is really trying to get back in, into the game and they get a penalty. And Mark Uth, like against Dusseldorf on the weekend, again misses. If they would have scored that one, I think the game would have ended 3-3. The other games were not that much to talk home about. Um, Dusseldorf gets a 2-1 win over Schalke. Where Schalke it was a horrible game in the first half. Schalke takes the lead through McKinney, but then a uh, kind of contentious goal through Hennings. I thought there was some push. Mm, they gave it. So it's 1-1 uh, and then a few minutes later Karaman makes it 2-1 and Schalke cannot go back. Actually, Düsseldorf had the better chances. Um, Augsburg, Paderborn, the really nil-nil. Not much to talk about except I think there was uh, one of Paderborn player who got a yellow card. I got 15, which is equalizing the record of Effenberg. And Mainz Union, to be honest, was also kind of a weird game where uh, Mainz takes the lead. Ingwardsen with a free kick where the goalkeeper, he should not have come back, um, gets an equalizer, but then Mainz uh, cannot is pressing for the win, cannot find it, and it ends 1-1. One, one. And so now, after all this, in the Bundesliga, Bayern more or less champions, Dortmund and Leipzig look very safe in the Champions League. It's between Gladbach and Leverkusen, we talked about this. But it's we have to look down. Eintracht, as I said, looks a little bit shaky. Um, Mainz, that point did not really help. Düsseldorf is improving their chances 40% now. Bremen... They really would have liked the Schalke win. Now Bremen has to play against Schalke. If they get a win, maybe it looks better. Paderborn, they're picking up points, but they need to pick up wins. And I think without that, they're not going to move far out. Well, that ends the Bundesliga review for the midweek. Uh, it was quite uh, sensational. I reviewed the first few games in a separate video where we also talked about Bayern Dortmund. So look up that video. Uh, let me know which games you watched, whether you saw actually the second Bundesliga game between Stuttgart and Hamburg. Give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.